In this video, I'm going to be taking you inside my head, show you why I do what I do in a live online game of Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch this YouTube video. Now, if this is your first time ever visiting my channel, my channel is all about getting better at Madden 21. We try to do that through a variety of different ways, studying pro players, uh, obviously studying and just getting into practice mode on our own, and then through also these game plays where we go in, test out our theories and our lab sessions on the virtual gridiron and do our best. So um, if you guys want to subscribe, it's completely free to subscribe. It allows you to be able to know whenever we release a new video. So you can do that for free. It's, it's in the description of this video. Okay, guys, so one last thing I want to talk about before we dive into the actual gameplay is uh, one other thing that I want to hit on is my text message membership. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a completely free membership that I provide for my community. All you have to do to sign up for it is just send me a text message. My number is in the top left hand corner of your screen so you can always uh, be able to access that uh, as well there for you. So that is there for you for as a resource uh, for you to be able to just improve uh, your game in Madden 21. So um, that's completely free if you want to get free schemes uh, and it's no there's no computerization of it it's just it's literally I sit down on my cell phone and I just text you guys free schemes and stuff like that every single week so if you want to get that or if you have any Madden questions you can also hit me up um, via that medium as well you can always via you can always text me and hit me up if you have any questions so that number is in the description as well as the top left hand corner of your screen Okay, guys, so I am running my nickel 335 wide defensive ebook on defense, and I'm running my bunch uh, tight end offensive ebook on offense. So, um, jumping in, I'm using some new abilities, uh, and I'm actually really, really jacked up and excited about it because I think that this is going to make the 335 wide defense even better than it already was because I personally play a lot, lot better um, whenever I'm I can have a zone base scheme. If I'm not, if I'm running a man base scheme, just for me personally, um, I just don't like doing that. I would much rather play zone coverage um, than I would play uh, man coverage. So that's what we're doing in today's video. We're playing a lot of zone coverage uh, over the middle of the field. We've got different abilities all across the field. We have. Um, we have mid zone KO. We have uh, deep in KO. We ha or, or deep whatever it's called. Deep in z it's the zone versions of all of the abilities. I don't know. I don't know exactly what they're called. I know that one of them is called mid zone KO. Um, that was a really bad stick by me. I got to make that tackle in the backfield. But on the first drive, the biggest thing that we're trying to do is, and we're going to just basically, um, you know, kind of give him some little things here and there. But really what we're trying to do is kind of figure out what does he want to do uh, on the offensive side of the ball. Um, I've kind of conceded to him that his flats are going to be open. If you notice the zone drops that I was setting, and I will constantly tinker uh tinker with those zone drops throughout the course of the entire game. You're going to see a lot of different zone drops. You're going to see me tweak those based on uh, situational awareness and things like that. But as you can see right there, that's one of the best flat routes in the entire game. Um, and it's only going to get him about four yards on this. So uh, really, really pumped about that. Um, here we got a critical third down and eight. I'm going to lock on there and then see... And he's going to throw right into my guy. And that's why you put those abilities on the, the players. You notice that he, uh, you notice that my corner didn't drunk, didn't drift back like to go cover nobody really, right? He stayed down on the route. And the reason he, part of the reason he did that, and then the real reason that he was able to break down on the ball so effectively is because he has the deep out um, zone KO, right? So he's in an outside quarter, which is an, a deep out zone. And so you saw him light up as soon as he threw it. We we're able to get the interception. Good job by the defense. Now the offense needs to do its job. Um, and as you can see, I mean, everybody in their mom is going to run 3-3-5 wide. The reason why is because it's the best defense in the game. And so that's why I wrote an ebook on it. If you want to get that defense, it's in the description of this video. So it looks like he's going to be running some 335 wide as well. Um, let's see if he's audibly down from 335 normal. I think he was, but we'll see. Nope, he's just coming out in 335 wide. So what that means is 
He's probably not going to run a lot of coverage defense. He's probably going to run a lot of blitzing t blitzing style uh, of defenses as well. So that should mean that these flats are going to be hard for him to stop. When you notice that somebody has a linebacker with a pass rushing ability on there, on that outside, as you see right here, I think that's Lawrence Taylor for him. Um, he's going to blitz almost every time. I mean, I can almost tell you uh, he is going to blitz a lot. Right there, that was a laser by Randall Cunningham. Um, one little trick when you're running PE boot over, I haven't talked about this yet very much. One little trick that I like to do is motion Tyreek Hill out. And the reason why uh, I think it does a really, really good job, and that was a nice little double juke right there to get us back into position. Um, but I think it does a much, much, much better job when you do that. If you don't do that, uh, I find that, I don't know. I just find that it doesn't work as well. Like the offense, um, the, he can use for that a lot more. So I'm going to try to be really disciplined about doing that. I forget to do it too. But here, uh, and as that, and that's the that's the move right there. If he blitzes me, inside switch is really really hard to stop in a blitzing type of scenario. So like right here, I'm going to try to hit the running back. Um, and I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm just going to have to step up, take my medicine. And sometimes you have to do that. You know what I mean? Like nothing's open you just take your sack like he did a really good job there um part of the inside switch like when you want to run inside switch to beat man coverage it is really really good against man to man it's only really really good if you motion them over because it creates kind of a a poor alignment uh especially for someone that likes to run three three five wide um because if that linebacker blitzes off the edge there's nobody to cover uh the running backs like right here uh right there and of course we throw a pick great defense by him um we need to get a tackle so we both throw picks on our first drive um that's how powerful the defense of three through five is and that was just a bad read by me i should have playmakered i I just thought I could fit it in quick. I obviously wasn't able to do that. And now we're in a, a little bit of a tough spot here. He's ran inside zone or HB dive um, the first play every single play. So we're going to kind of try to, you know, take that away. That's our first step. Um, here we're going to go to a little bit more of a coverage. Uh, Two-man rush. And try to take that away. That was almost an incredible throw. And he's running with Russell Wilson at quarterback. I think the only ability he has on his quarterback is Gunslinger. Um, right here, we're going to try to send some pressure. Uh, so we're going to go into a little bit of a cover two. Uh, good read by him. That was just really bad defense by me. Now what we're going to do, this, is, this should get him here. Man coverage across the board. That's a huge stop. So what we did right there was we ran we because again we've been running the zone every play right. So we switched to man. We blitzed everybody. I noticed that his flat route would have been open, and so I just basically manually took that away. But uh, really decent stop there. So now defense has done its job. Offense needs to do its job right now. Uh, he's going to use a rush us right up the a gap. That's also why I really like to run this pa play because I find that the pa pa play is really really hard to. Um, it's it's just really hard to blitz. Right here, we're going to go with a little curl route um, to uh, to Tyreek, and we got the tight end. And I should have I, I should have waited maybe just a split second longer. Uh, let's see if Vernon Davis can get open. Normally Vernon Davis has been able to get open on that route, uh, that corner route, but not sure. We'll see. And good good D by him. We're gonna take our three. Uh, his red zone D or oh well we might take our three on third down just so we don't turn it over. His red zone D has been really really good. Uh, like really, really, really good. So, and red, it's hard to score in the red zone. Uh, I'm gonna go to another play that I really like uh, in these situations, and that is basically a curl flat concept. Um, the only difference is we're gonna keep this. We're gonna do a little block and release cross. We got a block and release flat. You know, so realistically, what we're trying to do is we're either trying to hit McLaurin in the back of the end zone, or we're trying to hit this curl curl flat read, and we're gonna kind of force it a little bit. And good D by him. We're going to go ahead and take our three. We had the curl route right there, but I need to be a little bit more strategic with that motion. I let him get a little too far outside, and that he did a good job, I think, of resetting his zone drops or something um, to making that play a little bit better. So 
Anyway, we are going to get on the board early. I believe we do get ball at half, so that's good. Defense is playing really good. Offense has played great except in the red zone. So um, the, the red zone is such a key area. I'm actually going to be building um, a couple of different tutorials this weekend as well uh, for the red zone. i got to jump in the lab and kind of figure that out a little bit because my red zone offense has not been good. My red zone defense really hasn't even been that great either. It's been okay. Uh, but anyway, all right, here we go. Uh, let's see if he goes inside zone here. He's ran inside. Nope, he's going to go stretch. And he goes to – see, this is why I don't like runners. Um, I feel like that's very fluke. I feel like that's such a fluky play. Like, I just don't – I don't understand that at all. He's probably going to go right back to it. Um, and I'm okay with that. Let's see here. And right there I thought Sean Taylor should have played that. He didn't play the corner. I, normally Sean Taylor will do a good job of that. And now that's going to put us right in the situation we just said we don't want to be in. We don't want to be in the red zone. Um, I don't know. I just I don't feel very good in the red zone right now defensively. I guess it's just because I don't feel like I know what, to, what specifically to call. And quick toss. That was actually decent defense. So here we're going to take our timeout, try to kind of conserve some time here a little bit. Um, also, seven yards. So within that seven yards, you got to remember the red, the end zone itself is a little bit bigger than that. So we're going to go with 15, 5, and 5. Now he's going to come out in goal line. Um, when people come out in goal line against me, I like to go to this cover three and, um, you know, basically say, you know, bring it. Um, and, of course, he's going to bring it all right and almost scores. So good read by him. Third and goal, he's probably going to come out and goal line again. Uh, now, since he's on the four-yard line, now I'm going to put these back to 10 yards. See how I kind of change them up a little bit? So he's coming back out in goal line. I'm going to stay in this 4-4. Um, whoops. And we're going to make the tackle. Good job. Okay. So ball on the two-yard line. And he's going to get in. I think he just ran. I don't even know what play he just ran. Um, that's that's a really, really frustrating. Uh, just, just, just very frustrating that we gave that up. And we're going to give this up to, like, just brain dead. Brain dead defense right now from me. I should have, should have, I don't know why I refuse to come out in goal line when I play goal line. I need to just come out in goal line. Um, goal line versus goal line pretty much helps it a lot. I just brain dead defense on the field goal too, and that's what you get when you play mutt. You get a lot of random, stupid stuff like this. Um, it's why people don't like playing this game mode. It's why people f complain constantly because you know Madden, for whatever reason, allows people to get away with stupid stuff like what he just did um, with the fake field goal block. And you just have to basically come out and you know you just you just can't come out in in, in what I came out in defensively. So anyway, right there, that's. That's a laser, you know, that that's a laser. I don't care that that was out of bounds. I mean, it's ridiculous, so that's okay. Obviously, very frustrated right now because we throw an absolute laser and Madden says, no, you can't have that, even though that was a dot. Um, there's the double juke again, and that's actually pretty decent, um, pretty decent play. Now, we need – that was actually, I felt like, fairly smart. Um, we get ball at halftime, so we don't have to score a touchdown here. We just need a field goal. Um, now, would we like a touchdown? Of course we'd like a touchdown. Everybody wants to get a touchdown, right? But we're going to take the for sure field goal. Um, and that's a laser. Randall Cunningham just threw a dime off his back foot. That was a really risky throw right there. Uh, I shouldn't. One of the things that I think is actually important is to know when to roll out or not. Like... I think that's actually super, super important. Um, okay, right here, this is kind of a tricky scenario. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to hit a motion crosser or um, or Vernon Davis or Moss. That's really what we're looking at right here. And we got Vernon Davis right up the seam. That's a huge touchdown. Bunch tight end offense strikes. Um, that's huge. That's a huge, 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 huge touchdown. Um we're not going to chase the points just yet. 
Uh, I think he's going to continue to do stuff like that, so we might be able to catch him next time with like a fake field goal block or something like that. So 19 seconds left. So that was that was a big drive for the offense right there. We made a couple couple nice reads. Um, the delay fade one, you know, you really you should when you run PA boot over or PA cross whatever you want to call it, right? Um, you don't always want to get out of the pocket, right? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So that's where you got to read. It, it, it is certainly a read. All right, right here we're gonna blitz everybody. He's probably going to run it. We're going to go right through the A-gap here. Just send pressure. And see if he takes timeouts. And he's going to. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the same defense, um, but we're going to play a little bit shallower in our coverage. And hopefully we can get this thing to come right through here. And, man, that should have been a pick. That should have been a pick. So now we're going to bluff him. Can we please catch the ball? All right, so that is a good, I mean, if, if yeah. If we would have caught the ball, like, right at the, at the pick point, we might have had enough time to get out of bounds and go get a field goal. But defense is playing good. He, defense play. I feel like he got a fluky run, and this is the kind of stuff. I'm calling timeout. I'm calling timeout. I'm calling timeout. It won't let me do it. And he's going to, you know, okay, we'll get lucky. But th th these are the – this guy is obviously a mutt player. I mean, this is – I mean, these these are the kind of people that just drive me absolutely wild. Um, and, and, and the frustrating part is it's like, it's like kind of my own fault. Because if I would have waited, I would have known he was an onside kick. And oh, it is what it is. He's going to try to use rush me again. Um, we're going to dot him up again. And that's what I like about PA cross or PA boot over. If you watch the way the running back will pretty much almost always pick up somebody, um, you see right, right here, and we'll wait on him, wait on him, wait on him. And that's a nice throw by Cunningham. I've been very impressed so far. Uh, with Randall Cunningham. Now what we're going to try to do um, is we're going to try to hit him. I can almost guarantee you um, he is probably going to... Uh, we're going to have to... Ah, uh, we shouldn't have called timeout. Dang it. And that's a mistake. That's a huge mistake. Uh, I hit the wrong button, hot routed a route I didn't want to hot route, and I ran out of time. That's a huge, 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 huge mistake. I shouldn't have taken the timeout. When you mess up like that, do not take a timeout. Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not take a timeout. Uh, and we should have him in the red zone. And yet another crossing route we can't complete because we possession catch him on the sideline. And Madden doesn't let me possession catch it. Um, he's going to expect us to go to the same combination. And to be honest with you, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do that same combination that scores a touchdown. Now, he's shifted in the red zone to running more big nickels. So watch that safety here. And that's a great aggressive catch. Um, if I would have tried to – I basically made a bad read. And if I would have tried to aggressive catch that, he would have picked me off. So I'm actually really pumped that I chose to do that. All right, now right here, we're going to go back to that setup. The reason, you know, it worked for us. We'll see if we can get it to work again. He's probably going to be blitzing everybody. And got him. This time we get our feet down. Touchdown, Cowboys. Bunch tight in. Dotting. And the bunch tight, I mean, the offense has been playing fine. Defense has been playing fine. It was those two, I think it was two red zone possessions that he ended up bagging us. And, you know, that's where, again, red zone offense, games are won and lost in the red zone. He converted in the red zone for his touchdown. We didn't do a good job of stopping him. And then also it came back around again. So, you know, you have to be prepared for the red zone. So clearly um, the goal line meta for the red zone is definitely the meta for a reason. So I just personally, you know, I, I just personally hate 
hate, 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 hate coming out of goal line on offense. But okay, so we're gonna check our coaching adjustments here. We've got to make these back, put these back to normal, and we're gonna to try to defend this strong close. Um, and he's gonna go back to the play that scored him a touchdown, or that really put him in scoring position. And like I said, I mean, every single time he has ran the ball. So that's where we got to be a little bit more prepared for the run. And that's fine. That's, you know, that's a four-yard flat. If he's going to take that all game long, I'm fine with that, but we're not going to stress out too much about that. Corner route, corner route, corner route, corner route, corner route. Let's go get him. Uh, that's fine. I want to see him throw that corner route. I'm kind of baiting that corner because I think that I will be able to um, stop that corner route. Oh, I'm down. I'm down, I'm down, I'm down, I'm down, I'm down, I'm down, I'm down. Dang it. So he did hit me on the corner route. Um, now, so so another thing is, you know, again, tendencies. So he has not thrown, um, he has not thrown a crossing route yet. So we're going to try to catch him here. And there we go, big sack. All right, let's see what happens here. But he's not throwing a crossing route yet, so I'm gonna I'm gonna shift on him a little bit. Flats are gonna be at 15. Curl flats are gonna be at five. Um, and the reason why is because I'm trying to kind of get him to throw me uh, a corner. And we'll see what he throws here. There's a corner. There's a post. And good read by him. And he's in for six. Good drive, good drive. Man, good drive. I was trying to bait him into throwing the corner route, and then I completely bailed on the post route. I should have grabbed that post route. That was that was my responsibility as a user was to defend that tight end post. So good job by him. So now offense, pressure shifts back. I've got to sit here and wait because of what you just see. Onside kick every single time. That's what these people do. So we'll onside kick, and we'll get the ball back. And honestly, an onside kick's not a crazy theory right there because of the situation. You know, I'm up by one possession, um, you know, but all he really needs is a field goal. And this way, it kind of, you know, his red zone defense has been playing great. So, I mean, it's not a bad strategy. And there's PA boot over once again. The user rush. As long as you don't, what I'm doing is I'm canceling the play action. The play action is canceling, um, or the running back then picks up the user rush. Like right here, I could get out of here. You know, and there's PA boot over. And now we're in the red zone. So this is this is a big big down here. So I'm going to go to that tight end corner play, and the reason why is because number one, I'm going to try to catch him. Going a little quick here, uh, but also, and Moss just makes a huge play right there. And we're just going to try to catch him in a no huddle situation. Kind of, we're going to flip on him. And we're going to also flip it, flip it on him. Uh, we thought we were going to flip it on him, and you know what? We're going to do it again. We should probably go to goal line here. I'm going to flip on him. And then due to the, the clock, let's see what he does here to this flip. So he doesn't shift anything, so we're going to try to hit this. And we're not going to be able to hit it. Now, to me, it does mean no good to kick a field goal right here. So we're going to come out in goal line. Um, you know, for a lot of reasons, it doesn't matter if I kick a field goal here. I mean, with the clock the way the clock is, uh, I'm not in a great position. Taking that timeout was huge. Um, 
I mean, it was huge, 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 huge. So I'm just going to try to pop a fullback dive. Uh, and he's going to go to that way. So I'm going to go to this power O and just try to catch him. And we're able to catch him. Touchdown. That's huge. It's a huge touchdown. It's a, it's a huge, huge, huge touchdown right there. And, you know, honestly, I would say we got a little lucky because uh, he had us pretty much dead to rights here. Okay, so in a situation like this, it's like, what do you call, what do you call, what do you call, what do you call? Um, one of my favorite plays is the stretch, um, just because of the situation here. So we're going to move him, let him kind of, let him kind of over adjust, and then we're just going to cut back in and get that big time two point conversion there. Um, so that way we go up 10, 10 points with two minutes. Um, you know, so the offense, that strong tight is probably what, I mean, inside the five-yard line, I think I need to go start shifting to running more strong tight and goal line combos. Um, but, but anyway, so now he's probably not going to throw the ball to the uh, flats. He's probably not going to run the ball. So it's going to, this puts, this puts strong close in a bad position. A hundred percent does. Um, just because of the, you know, and he is going to try to run it. Okay, so we're just going to kind of contain the run. And I'm really surprised at his decision making you know, up uh, right there. I guess it's because he's got the two minute warning. Uh, whoops, right there. We're going to take a timeout. We don't really need the timeouts. Um, and then we accidentally came out in the wrong defense there, so. I'm just in any post routes, any post routes, any post routes. And there's those deep end KOs. That's what I'm talking about. So that's a post route. That's a coverage beater, right? Um, he's trying to get a one-play touchdown. The reason that I like this uh, defense so much and the reason that I like these abilities that I've been running is because against something like that, it's very, very difficult for that coverage beater to work. Um, and there's Big Vern doing his thing, uh, getting open. You know, it's just very hard for that coverage beater to to work. I mean, that's what he was trying to do. He's trying, and he had the read that he wanted. I mean, he wanted to throw that. He knew exactly what he was doing with that. Um, but you see the deep in KOs, the deep in zone KOs, uh, and right here, uh, that's just a bad read by me. I I shouldn't have thrown that. I had the flat right open. I kind of panicked a little bit with that user rush, and that's what that user rush is for. I mean, it just you know, it just makes people panic. All right, right here. Got Mabel covered on this side. I got to get over here. And I don't know why. I don't know why. Play, the, the, like, you should always pass commit. Like, you, you should always, always pass commit unless you're run committing, in my opinion. Um, for stuff like what just happened to me. I mean, he just. And there's that. You see? I mean, if he wants to throw the flat, that's four yards. It's okay. You know, we're okay giving that up. But right here, we've got our, our outside KOs. And we're going to get another pick. That's the outside KO once again. And that's so the corners on the outside have outside KO on them. And then the corners on the inside have inside KO on them. So, or inside knockout. So, good defensive stand. That should seal it as long as we don't throw him a pick six or something. Um, and see here, he's kind of setting up that user rush. Going to come right through the A-gap. And there we go. There's the double juke. It's been there all game. He really hasn't adjusted to PA boot over, um, you know, really all game. I mean, he just hasn't really adjusted to it. Right here, we're going to do a little bit of a max protect setup to try to prevent this user rush. Um And we'll just take our quick flat read. But, you know, offense played okay. Offense offense didn't play as good as it could play. Um, he plays a really good – I mean, he has a good defense for sure. Um, you know, but it is what it is. Like, offense didn't play great, but it played good enough. And we've refused for whatever reason. We had that crossing route probably all game. We, we did not take that crossing route. Like, the rollout crosser was open most of the game. We just didn't take it. So another good game, over 300 yards passing, even at the end there. Thanks for watching. If you want to get the offense, it's in the description. If you want to get the defense, it's in the description. And if you have any questions, you can always text me. My number's in the description as well. We'll see you on stream tonight at 10.